and Memphis kind of turning up right now with uh with uh all the music is in. In. yeah right everybody coming up right now so yeah yeah kind of lit yeah oh my gosh see Vanessa see the way she talk like a dancer welcome back world to the society road podcast got your host Nick Walker here today got your co-host Tatiana nice to meet her and got a special guest on today shout out to Frankie Bun so hey we just gonna start off by, you know, getting you to talk a little bit about yourself, tell the audience what you do. Cool. Uh, I'm a photographer based in New York City. Uh, moved here about like three and a half years ago um, from Rochester, New York, which is the hometown to Kodak film. So I like, kind of been around photography my whole life, but yeah, been out with Society Row for about six months now. So yeah. Dope. Dope. So, so um, talk to me a little bit about your inspirations in photography. I'm sure you get you get your creative process from you know somewhere. Somebody influenced you. So, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, what I mean, like, kind of the joke I've always told is like, I always hung out with skateboarders and people in bands, and I wasn't good at skateboarding, and I wasn't good at playing music. So, like, you know, you got to find your role. And I started realizing, like, you know, like, I'd pick up these magazines and be like, well, wait, like, somebody had to photograph that band. Somebody had to photograph that skateboarder. Maybe that's what I could do. So, like, started out there. And then I uh, kind of did my, my, like, you know, years of college trying to figure out what's going on, what I'm, what I'm going to do. And... Kind of was, wasn't going anywhere. And then I was like, well, let me go take a photo class again. I liked the photo class in high school. Um, I've been, you know, just kind of like sitting on it and went back and was just like, oh, this is, this is where I want to be. There's, you know, jobs to be had if I'm willing to move to New York City, which is something I always wanted to do. And, you know, it's one of the centers for it. So I just jumped onto that, went to transfer to a really amazing college, RIT, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology. And, uh, you know, met amazing people, met uh, someone that would go on to like, mentor me like really heavily because he, um, my teacher, uh, Clay Patrick McBride, had photographed a lot of the bands that I grew up like looking at those photographs or like, you know, looking at those bands. And I was like, oh, holy shit, this guy like knows what he's talking about and just like soaked in everything that he had to say. And uh, then down here, I'm doing a lot of lighting for big advertisement jobs or like celebrity editorial jobs um and getting my own thing started and going man it sounds dope sounds dope like you, you do do you think that's your this is your life purpose right here i think so yeah i mean like uh if it wasn't this i'm like i'd probably be a roadie like just setting up stages or something like that. I don't know what I would, I would do, but I mean, I love it every day. You know, it's like kind of one of those things like pretty much every, every day I'm like, Oh wow. This is how I'm paying my bills. Like versus, you know, sitting in an office. Hey, that's real. No hate to people that sit in office. I mean, if that's hey, what you love to hey, do, hey, but like, hey. Hey, I feel you though. I feel you though. Don't want me balancing your books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, what is like a uh like a must-have equipment for you, like no matter where you're going and working? Um, smart ass answer or camera. But <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm big into lighting. So like I know a lot of people, um, especially like it's definitely come back in the trend of like uh, daylight lit images and stuff like that. And that's, it's like an art form and knowing how to deal with the sun. But uh, I'm always lighting right now. I'm really loving Profoto B10s. They're amazing lights. Their Profoto line is amazing. So that's probably one of my go-tos. I also love using retro filters that were created for like special effects um back in film photography days they're like all things you can kind of do in photoshop but there's a little bit of magic when you can do it in camera and have it distort the image 
that way. So probably those are my two things is like good lights and uh, weird filters to mess with the image. I got like a whole briefcase full of them. So you, you said you have a whole uh, file of filters that you just kind of play around with and yeah, try to, try to see what, what happens. Like, so um, do you, do you have some that you're like, do you have an image in your head that you kind of try to portray um, dealing with whoever you're dealing with as far as like, do you base it around what you like or do you base it around what the, um, the, the actual creative likes? Well, so that's the great thing about like, um, you know, working with musicians or entertainers like I like to do is like there's there's something that you're going for. So they're like, here's our music. And you can just like sit and digest exactly like what they're about. You know, like a heavy metal band is going to want to be photographed different than like a pop singer. And that lets you play like you can pull from your arsenal or my arsenal. Like I can pull and be like, oh, I definitely I'm going to want to do this, but it's not going to fit each of them, but there's like uh, already a setup of like what they want, you know, like it's this style, like we're going to be launching this album and it's going to sound like this and here you go, take a listen to it and then get some ideas and, you know, like I'll listen to the music and then I'll go look at uh, photo books or like other images that they already have. Um, and that type of stuff just to get like a sense of like who they are. So by the time they show up in the studio, I'm like, I got five ideas that I think are going to be really cool that you guys don't have, but will fit you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Kind of just like base, whatever scheme you use and based off of the music they have, or like, if it's like a dark tone or, you know, I'm yeah. saying, poppy or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And like actors and stuff like that, they're like, usually like, I'm going out for this type of role or like, you know, I get cast as a villain all the time. So like, mm -hmm. I want to, I want a headshot that looks, makes me look, you know, ominous. I don't want to be like smiling next to like a field full of flowers, which, you know, that's just a different, different thing. But it's like, I really love that for like, just being able to get, show up and be prepared. It's not just like, you're just showing up and photographing somebody. You're like, oh, I, I kind of know what you're going to like. And like, I can cater stuff to you. And then we can both get something that we really like and like thinks awesome for sure sure um who inspires you like in professionally um, like creatively uh favorite like working photographer is uh, frank ockenfelds He's amazing. He shoots all the stuff for like American Horror Story. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I rock with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he's, he, he's, uh, I think he shot like most of the seasons, but, um, and the other guy that shot the other ones was awesome too. Uh, just but that, that guy's amazing. And the person that uh, turned me on to that is uh, my teacher, Clay Patch McBride. He, uh, he and him like, both amazing people. I also um, have bought up these, which are, uh, this is this uh, book called The Alternative Pick. And there's 14 volumes of that, which span from like, I think 91 to 2004 or something like that. Um, and they're called source books. Mm -hmm. And what source books were, they were like Instagram before Instagram for professional photographers. So you'd pay to take out a page, put your best work from that year into it and hope that like a magazine editor would pick that up and call you. So like, there's a ton of just well, like gold in there that's just been like lost. And like the way people shot in the nineties is crazy. Like people will take a whole page out in those books for like a blurry image that looks awesome. But like, I'm like, I don't know if I could justify that for myself. It was, it was expensive to take out those pages, but those, I, I love those books. I'm always looking at those books for inspiration. Cause then also it's every page is a different photographer. You get, you know, just a wide array of photos. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that was a, it took a while to track all those down because they weren't really like precious, but that also means they weren't really expensive to buy, so. 
once I found them all, I got them. So are, like, are those like available everywhere? Uh, you got to find them from like secondhand stores because basically what, what they were was like an art director in a magazine would buy it every year and then keep it on their shelves. And like, you know, if they're like, oh, we got uh, a photo shoot with a supermodel, like flip through it. Okay. Like this person looks awesome. That person looks awesome. Give them a policy if they're available. Um, but because it was basically like a phone book or like an industrial like type use it wasn't ever really like gotcha. for the public and so a lot of them just got thrown out but you can find them on ebay and whatever for decent prices so wow that's awesome and i guess some some companies still kind of do that there's like at edge and the book but they're pretty expensive like mm. because it takes a lot of money to print those and they don't get used a ton anymore um but source books still exist and people still do use them. Um, it's just harder to find them. That company is out of business. They, they don't make them anymore. What's the, what celebrity would you really want to work with to kind of create an image for that celebrity? Or it could be actor, it could be, you know, whatever, whatever type of music. Um, so like a lot of people that I really look up to have photographed Slipknot, the band. Okay. And Slipknot would be a pretty crazy one. Like, I love their music. Um, I grew up with that. Like, I remember watching those music videos when I was like 14 and being like, what the fuck? This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. It would be awesome. I'm also a huge Fast and Furious fan. Like, I love that. <laughs> Like, I, I can tell you the story of how I got it back into that when I was an adult, but like, I mean, Vin Diesel would be amazing. Um, yeah, like, I think those two would be probably like top of the list if you were like, you could photograph anybody. Uh, also, John Milkovich is super down with photographers, so like, he would probably be a cool person to work with. Um, yeah. You listen to Travis Scott? Travis Scott, yeah. Yeah, I, I think you'd probably be dope, you know, working with him. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. Yeah, he's he worked with uh, La Chapelle. I don't know if you know who that is, but uh, David La Chapelle. Mm -hmm. um, he's an amazing photographer, and he has, like, huge – like, Astroworld, that whole set that they made and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that guy – he does that every shoot pretty much. Like, all of his shoots are to that, to that scale, which is crazy. I've never worked with La Chapelle, but like I'm sure it's it's a lot. Right. So yeah. what do you feel like your specialty um is when it comes to your work? Like what do you feel like is like what you excel the most at? Um I feel like my lighting is definitely something that's like uh not uh, because I've worked with so many photographers and like on so many different types of shoots where I've had to light different things. I'm really like com comfortable showing up and being like, what needs to happen here? Mm -hmm. um, I also just really like playing with images. I don't like to play it safe with the editing. Like, but uh, the dope part about Photoshop is like, you can save a copy and fuck up a file and then like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, you know, I love trying weird editing and then just seeing like, like I just sent a weird edit to somebody today and I was like, what do you think? This is like kind of weird. And they're like, yeah, that's cool. Like I could like, we could maybe use it for something. You know, it's, it wasn't what we were thinking, but like, I was like, I got the ones that you were thinking of, but like we have this weird one now that like we weren't expecting. It just happened to work out. Right. So, so training wise as far as like your lighting or whatever did you is it something that you just worked on to kind of try to master or did you have somebody that kind of showed you the ropes so my, my my teacher is like he calls himself like a lighting ninja like a, a master at it um <laughs> he uh he was the start of it like I, when I saw him working, I was like, oh, wow. So you can, like, this can really shape how the image looks. And you don't have to worry about, is it a cloudy day? Is it a sunny day? Whatever. Like, we can, you can make all different types of 
feelings and emotions with just the lighting on an, uh, a person or a subject. Um, so I worked for, or I like, I was a TA. I took it like every class he offered. Um, I was always going to him for advice. And then uh, when I left college, I went and I worked for um, a high-end photographer that does a lot of TV show posters and stuff like that. And working those jobs was crazy. You got to see like, um, you know, lighting a ton of different things that way. And then I went freelance and now it's just like lighting for everybody and everything. So it's just like slowly built up, built up. You know, I don't show up like cocky to shoots and saying like, oh, I know how to light this. But like, uh, I think that helps like with being like, so how would, you know, like if you got some expertise that I don't have, like, tell me, I want to know. Them. I don't want to, I'm not going to just say like, oh, when I did this before, I did it this way. Like, that's how we're going to do it, you know? Yeah, you just show up confident in your creative process, basically. Yeah, if I show up and you say like, I don't know how to do this, I, I got an idea. But if you're like, I got uh, like this method of doing it or I do it this way, like, great. Like, let's see it. I want to I want to know the secrets. You know, I'm just going to be a sponge. Like, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Gotta gotta always be willing to learn. Exactly. Like you can't you can't stop that, you know. <laughs> Tatiana, you uh, what's that? I'm oh, sorry, that's my dog. I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> it was a good break for white claw. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. uh so so you said that you moved to New York City? Yep. Where from, were you originally? From Rochester, New York, which okay. is like six hours away. New York City is big. Yeah. That's crazy because it don't look like it. it, don't, it don't yeah. Like it. It's yeah. fast. When I go home to my parents, it is faster to drive through New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and then back into New York than it is to drive up New York. Like, it's faster to go through, through two different other states to get back into New York state, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, like, uh, it's, you know, basically Canada up there. The winters are super, uh, super gray and cold and all that stuff. But, um, you know, it was, it, it was a, a good place to be when I was younger. And like, they have one of the top five photo schools there at RIT because Kodak was there. So Kodak put a bunch of money into it um, and, you know, they were like this renowned school. And then when I came down here, as I was like going on sets and stuff like that, people were like, oh, you went there? Great. Like, yeah, we know tons of people from there or I went there, you know, I met tons of alumni on set that were just like, oh, I graduated this year. What did you graduate? You know, that type of thing. So going to school there, it kind of develop you an infrastructure of people to kind of work with a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah i mean it's it's a tight like we got our own little facebook page down here for the rit photo alumni like just the photo school alumni in new york city um on facebook to like help each other out sell things ask questions all that type of stuff so it's cool cool community and unfortunately like uh this year um because covid it got canceled but usually there's a big alumni event every year at a bar and they uh get to meet up and all talk and stuff like that and they'll bring down the graduating class and like have them introduce themselves and stuff like that so the teachers come down the uh some of the kids come down and then the uh older alumni come in and you know it's just a great Great time. Dope, dope, dope. That sounds nice. Um, what do you see yourself as a photographer in five years? Uh, I'm hoping to be pretty consistently shooting like editorials for uh, music and celebrity type stuff. Um, getting some ad work through that. And then kind of like maybe in five years, hopefully being like on the transition from editorial to just advertising. Um, like the big goal is to be shooting TV show posters and movie posters and album artwork. 
Okay, so. that's awesome. So you like to yeah. like, like you wouldn't want to shoot like ads, like Coca-Cola ads with like actual like products like that. Like you would rather shoot like people and like different kind of concepts like that. Yeah, I mean like there can definitely be some cool uh, Coca-Cola Pepsi ads, like a hundred percent. They, you know, they have that, that the weekend ad for um, the Super Bowl and stuff like that. Uh, I work with some of those companies pretty regularly as a, a lighting person. Um, and they're, they're usually really awesome and they usually have like pretty cool concepts when they're coming to you. But um, yeah, like TV show posters, I worked on those. I've, I've worked on those, continue to work on those. And like, I don't know, there's something like just so awesome about like all the big sets and like the craziness of them and all that type of stuff. Cause like for a TV show poster, usually like the, the posters you see, figure there's like, two other shots that you didn't see that they're mm. holding on to for like if it becomes a huge success or like when the box set comes out or whatever so there's like so many more images that like get created that are just as amazing but just get held on to and uh, yeah that's really cool right. so 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 we we're gonna round out this interview but usually on every interview um, we like to play a game at the end to kind of just end it off. Oh, so. Tatiana, y'all been playing games on y'all on y'all interview? No, we haven't. So what kind no? of game have y'all played? Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it real quick. I'm gonna explain it. Okay. Real quick. So um the game is basically what I've been playing is a game called categories. I kind of made it up, but I kind of didn't. It was kind of over like a drunk night and we kind of made this shit up. That's so, game. That's game the uh, place to start a game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so in categories, basically, since we're all creatives, I'm just gonna say that um, the category is creatives. So I'm a I'm a name a creative first, and if my whatever the, the name of my creative ends with, you start you uh, that that letter starts the name of your creative. So okay. if I was to say like Jay Z, you would have to say uh, artist or creative with a Z that starts with a Z. A and Z. Then, <laughs> yeah. And then and then you kind of got to keep it going. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So so um you know we not we not really drinking. So but if we was drinking and you want to play this with your friends when you drink I am drinking but <laughs> uh, I, ain't, I ain't drinking. <laughs> so uh you would do it in five second intervals. So if they can't say uh artists or creative in five seconds, then they have to drink. So okay. so I'm gonna start it off and um who wants to go second? I'll go second. Okay, you'll yeah. go second. I think I'll go last, and then we'll just keep going in a circle. So um, I'm gonna start off with um, Beyonce. Beyonce. So B ends right? with E. Ends with, ends with e. e. So wait, it's the end letter, not the first letter. Yeah. So if it ends with a, it, whatever it ends with, you have to start your creative off in. Okay, gotcha. So, so and when I say creative, it can be a uh, artist. Uh, it could be a photographer. It could be whatever falls in the lanes of creative. Got it. Okay. So Beyonce, uh, Eddie Adams. Okay. Ends with an S. Um, Shakira. <laughs> what does that end with? <laughs> How do you smell that? Hey. <laughs> uh, Alicia Keys. S. Slipknot. Yep. Okay. Well, it can be a group, right? Group. What did you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something not to the T. T. Tyra Banks. Ooh, really? <laughs> Tyra Banks. Begins with an S. Uh, Sizzle. Why you keep on getting S's. Right. <laughs> I know. Sizzle. Uh, begin. Uh, ends with an A. A. Uh, Ansel Adams. Um, S. S again. <laughs> <laughs> um. There's only so many S's. <laughs> man, it's a I bunch lost. of <laughs> I lost. It was too many S's. You done? The the one the you know the girl that used to uh date, what's her name? Uh, Quavo. Sweetie. Oh yeah. I like, could have said sweetie. Now. Come on now. All right. All right, ends with an E. I'ma say Eminem. Eminem. M? 
correct? Yep. yep. Uh, damn. <laughs> What's some? <laughs> I mean, like, okay, myself, but like his first name's Steven. I don't know. I don't know if that okay, counts. That, that's, okay, cool. Okay. that's cool. That ends with an L. Mm -hmm. mm, Lindsay Lohan. Ooh. <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. I was like, okay. uh, yeah. ends with an N. I'm gonna say Nas. Ends wow. with an S. S back to S. Stephen Klein. Okay. N right. And yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know anyone with the N. I don't know yes, anyone with the N. Yes, you do. No, notorious. You said you said Tyra Banks, uh, Nigel Barker. Nigel that Barker. The next door. Wow, that's literally wow, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Nigel Barker. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. So, so this is the last round. Okay. I'm gonna say my okay. You said you said Barker ends with a yeah, R. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dang R. Uh, RZA ends with a B. A A. A. Um. Alexander McQueen. Is there another N? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got. Um, I don't know if I can help you this time. <laughs> <laughs> you got to end strong. You got to end strong. Nisi Nash is somebody, right? Yeah. Nisi okay. Nash. Okay. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's hella random. It's hella random, but yeah. Creative. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna round out uh, this interview. It was great having you on, Frankie Bun. Um, could you link? Could you could you um, link in your social media accounts like your Instagram, your Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, do you need me to type those into the chat or just uh, tell you? Yeah, just tell us over. Uh, at Francis Bond I I I uh, on Instagram, um, okay. Francis Bond I I I dot com on uh, just like my URL and it's got my uh, email on there. And yeah, if you're in New York City and like need some photos hit me up like any anybody uh everybody like i'm just down to work so yeah hey awesome. oh no hey if i'm ever well i should be in new york city but yeah you gotta get I, here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you yeah, you're here? I, yeah this is my studio so you come on in anytime like yeah always open dope so, hey it was awesome. it was great having you on. i'll make my way over there yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, coming coming out. Uh, there's like great little restaurants and bars around here too. Like I'm in a nice little neighborhood. Um, but yeah, it's great having a little studio to always work in because then you can just balance out schedules. You know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But it's great talking to you guys. Yes, yeah, great yeah. meeting you. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. So you know, we're gonna end on that note, and you know, we'll peace out. All right. It was great talking to you guys. Like I just said, but. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you.